I came to this interview on my free will. No, there was nothing promised to me for doing this interview. Excellent. Yes, everything that I say at this interview will be the truth. Um, I met Donald Trump um, at some parties I attend um, that I was working um, for Mr. Jeffrey Epstein. Um, there was about three or four times that I um, had encounters with Donald Trump. I was 13. The first time that I met Donald Trump uh, was at uh, a party at Jeffrey Epstein's um, mansion. Uh, we were, he was, there was a, um, an orgy going on and he was kind of watching off in the distance um, and, <clears throat> and he basically asked um, if I could come over and give him, um, give him a hand job. And, at first, I wasn't very comfortable with it. This was like my first or second, you know, first party, and I, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't think that that was my responsibility. Uh, but my recruiter told me that I needed to do it, um, so I agreed to. And um, then he, you know, I, I said, I said, began to. <coughs> sorry, this is um, a little difficult, but. Um, before I gave him a hand job, he kind of slapped my hand away and said, um, you need to use a glove. And she, the recruiter, he ran over and handed me a glove and said, no one touches Mr. Trump's penis without a glove. So I needed to use a glove. I um, gave him a hand job. And then um, immediately after you know, he, he had an orgasm, he left. And I didn't see him again at that party. Jeffrey Epstein um, is a billionaire friend of Donald Trump's that um, was responsible for throwing the sex parties. Um, <clears throat> there was, um, I originally um, came to New York trying to be a model and um, in my travels I met a girl named Tiffany there um, who um, was very interested in me and said that, you know, she that's what she did is that she helped girls you know get what they wanted and 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 she could help me get in, get into modeling that she knew a lot of um people that were that were higher ups and that it would be no problem um and so that's why you know she but i would just basically have to come model um at a couple of events and meet some people it would be no sweat so um of course i went you know that sounded like no big deal um and she was recruiting the girls to come to these parties, um, and and they all looked. I mean, most of them were you know my age. There was you know maybe a couple girls that were maybe fourteen or fifteen, but it seemed to me like we were all very young. So, okay. um, Jeffrey Epstein knew that I was um, thirteen years old uh, when he interviewed me. Um, he asked me to get um, down to my bra, and my, my just my panties, and I thought that was weird. But I mean, modeling maybe it was something about my figure. Um, and he asked that I give him a massage. So he, and then he asked me my age. He asked me, and I told him, you know, told him that I was 13. I told him why I was there, um, and and he basically said, well, you'll do. You know, I'm, I'm sure that you'll you'll fit pretty nicely here. And then he he tried to. Uh, basically uh, slip himself inside of me and I, I pushed him away and I said you know I'm I'm because at that point in time I still believed that there was models and then there was the girls that did that like I thought there was a separation so um, you know, I, I told him that I wasn't interested in that but he said that I would do um, and as far as Donald Trump um, he knew that I was 13 and I believe that Tiffany told him he seemed to take a liking to me because I was <clears throat> a, I was so young um, and um, I was also a virgin so I don't, I don't know he's it seemed like he wasn't really into having um, having girls that that were liked by the other guys he kind of you know the whole glove <laughs> he kind of liked things to be his first you know if that for lack of you know a better term but he was the one who wanted to um, get to get to a girl before everyone else did. 
Donald Trump knew that I was 13 um, because uh, the first the first night that I was there, uh, Tiffany actually suggested that you know, she had a whole bunch of different wigs, and I expressed interest in them. You know, I always told her that I would lo love to walk around with blue hair, and so I tried some on, and um, there was a blonde wig that you sh that that she said that looked great on me. So I wore that wig, um, and Donald Trump had specifically asked about me because I remind him of his daughter and she said well she's 13 as well so he knew the first time that he saw me but he took a liking to me because I look like his daughter the reason I'm coming out now um, is when it happened originally I just wanted to forget about the whole incident uh, and when I saw that he was running for president um, I felt it was my responsibility to come out and tell our country um, what kind of man this person is. Um, I don't think that he should even be the dog catcher, let alone running uh, the greatest country in the world. After I met Tiffany at the bus station, um, she took me to, basically went to her house, her apartment, and got ready. Um, I put on a blonde wig because it seemed fun to pretend to be so indifferent, but uh, we went to the party that that I was basically inter interviewing for um, and Jeffrey Epstein was the one that was running the party. Um, he had a quick meeting with everyone that was um, employed there and then um, he had um, a private interview with me. The first time that I met Jeffrey Epstein um, he did try to force himself um, inside of me without getting the go-ahead or anything um, and then um, on the it was <clears throat> probably about the third or fourth party is when um, he basically um, uh, forced it was as it was another massage and it was basically like it wasn't sex um, but it was there was penetration and I told him that I didn't want that but um, he kind of got a little irritated, so I don't know. There was something about him that um, I guess I kind of um, held him, uh, like I held a lot of resentment towards him. By that time that that happened, I, I kind of already started catching on that maybe I wasn't there for modeling and maybe I was just getting used for things and I felt that I kind of held him responsible. Um, I did receive money to go to these parties after every um, party. Um, I was paid by Mr. Mr. Epstein. There wasn't, out of all the girls that were there with me, I never, I've, most of them were 13, 14. I think the oldest one might have been 16, just, but just turned 16. Um, and she'd been there for a while. Um, it was actually, it was Tiffany. Um, he was, it, he was he he liked to watch other people have sex. I I, I mean it was must and he he's a germ doesn't like germs so he rather than partaking he just watches. So um, and Tiffany had informed him that I was the virgin um, and so he was I was basically um, sorry I, I I so it was Tiffany who introduced us. The second time that I saw Mr. Trump um, was same scenario. He was uh, on looking some, at an orgy, and uh, Tiffany came over to me and, and said that Donald, Donald Trump had requested that I perform oral sex on him. Um, and and never, I'd never done something like that with anybody, so I was a little nervous. Um, so I walked up to him uh, and and he was standing, sitting there very proud like and I just kind of moved in that direction and he kind of slapped me away and said what are you doing you know and you need to put a condom on like I was some like dirty filth or something without a condom and Tiffany ran over um, and handed him a con you know gave me a condom and apologized you know profusely and said that would never happen again um, that that and she looked at me and, and scolded me basically like a child and said that you know and that's not how you know Donald Trump always you know anytime you t it touches penis it needs to have a condom on or, or a glove you know you oh and especially when it comes to performing oral sex so um, I apologized and then um, I performed oral sex on him 
Uh, and once again, once he was done, he hopped up and but that's the last I saw of him at that party. It's like, once he's done, he's out. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Okay. Sometimes before the, I, some of the things that I noticed that were weird with him was sometimes before the parties he would come over um, and him, he, Jeffrey Epstein and himself would kind of banter back and forth and he was very, uh, Donald Trump was very racist. He said a lot of racist things. Like there was, uh, there was a lot of comments um, towards Mr. Epstein about you know being Jewish, um, and you know, called him a Jew bastard. You know, so that he was cheap. And there was some words I didn't even understand. Something about um, his his pe you know the shape of his penis um, being d directly related to his mole. Or I mean, I'm I'm not too familiar with the Jew you know the Jewish tradition. So, but I'm pretty sure that whatever he was saying wasn't very nice. <laughs> um, also referred to, you know, uh, people of Hispanic or, you know, Hispanic, they called them spicks, um, was, that was around the first time that the World Trade Center had gotten the bomb in the, in the 90s. Um, and you know, he was, you know, talking about the towel heads and how, you know, we would just be better off if we, you know, uh, didn't let him in or, you know, basically got rid of everyone, every single one that was already here. And I felt I just... That was, it made me really uncomfortable, really, really uncomfortable. He also loved to, to call black people um, niggers, and he, um, Arabic people, he called sand niggers. Um, the only time that, um, that he tried to give me some money was the last, our last encounter together, um, where he acted out a rape fantasy um, it just—I uh, was forced to—I was forced to give that money back because uh, Jeffrey Epstein paid us um, after the party. So, but he just gave me the money. I, I don't even know why he gave it to me. Maybe to make me feel more cheap. But it was—it um, was a pretty—I I, it was a rape fantasy to him. But I—I do, I wasn't playing. So. There was those. There was those two times, um, and then there was after uh, the next. The next thing that was that Tiffany approached me with was that he had a fantasy where he walked in on his maids, um, maids basically making out, and that he it was some type of fantasy for him. So she asked. I mean, I was at that point. I was like, I don't want to be involved with anything that has to do with him. But she's like, you are just basically the, the other one. So there's nothing that you will have to do. Just don't, you know, just, he wants, he's requesting you to be involved. So um, I reluctantly, I mean, I, don't, I, I felt like I didn't have a choice there. But um, <clears throat> it was basically he's walking in, his two maids, I was one of the maids. I was the white maid. And there was um, a Spanish girl, uh, Maria, who was the Hispanic maid. And we were making out, and he walks in, and he gets really angry and threatens to send call immigration on Maria if she doesn't come over and make things right and give him a blowjob. So <clears throat> while she is over there giving him a blowjob, I am just look, trying to you know I'm supposed to look scared, like oh, oh no, you know, and you know, cleaning, try to cleaning up things and pretending like I'm trying to go back to my job as a maid. Um, and then he, he's being so rude to Maria, I felt so bad for her. Um, even though, I guess, it didn't, just didn't seem like a fantasy. It didn't, it didn't seem like it's the weirdest fantasy as far as that. You know, he was, threatened to, he was threatening to call immigration on her, you know, so that she didn't know how to, you know, she went to, she wasn't even near going down to give him um, perform oral sex on him before he slapped her away and said, you know, you, what are you doing? You know you need to put a condom on and, and she's trying to, you know, I, I'm so sorry. And he's like, you can't even, can't even understand what you're saying. You know, it just, you know, you speak English, you know, you call their derogatory um, comments. Um, and then he's like, you know what? You don't know what you're doing. Have her come over and show you how it's done. And so... I, again, I, I said that I didn't, you know, I had to go over there or else he was going to call 
immigration on Maria. I didn't know if it was true or not, but I felt that, you know, he said that if I wasn't, if I didn't show her how to perform oral sex on him, then he was going to um, call immigration on her and then get rid of us both. You know, it, it was any, anything that was in relation to him getting off or being satisfied or happy had to do with him being in power, but extreme power, and it's it's very. Um, it's very hard to even, it was, it was always intimidating when he was like that. It was always, you didn't really know if it was true or, f I mean, it, it, like if you refused to play along, would he really call immigration on Maria? Would he really get rid of us both? And I didn't even want to know what that meant. You know, I always didn't, it wasn't a game. It just felt like it wasn't a game. The one night that I had the blonde wig on, um, he mentioned that I looked like, you know, I looked like to, you know, that I reminded him of his daughter. Um, <clears throat> and actually the, the, the maid fantasy, I didn't have a blonde wig on. <clears throat> I was trying to stay away from blonde wigs at the time. But he actually requested, told Tiffany that that's what he wanted me to wear. Like he wanted it and he's, and anytime I put it on, anytime I had it on and he'd see me, he'd, would say, oh man, you look, and just, and it wasn't like a, oh, you remind me of my daughter. It was this sick, evil, like, hmm, you remind me of my daughter. It was just this weird pleasure, sick smile. Like, I, I don't even want to know what he was thinking about. I, I could imagine what he was thinking about. After the parties would end, uh, we were to report to Mr. Epstein and <clears throat> basically tell him everything that happened, uh, with who, um, what they liked, what they disliked, if there was any requests, if there was any um, talk about anything. Uh, that's what, you know, we told Mr. Epstein everything. And then he paid us, and then we got to go home. And most of them, with me, you know, I would either, you know, I normally got taken, taken to the airport, you know, so to go back home. The fact that Trump has a chance to be the next president makes me feel disgusting inside. I've always been proud to be an American. I think we live in a beautiful country, but I just see him ruining everything. He's a horrible, what he portrays on the outside isn't even that great, but people don't even know the half of how evil, how sick and twisted that man is. I have a friend that's been my friend ever since the school year that I stopped going, you know, the, the eighth grade. I confided her, and she knows all about it. She knows everything. I mean, I, I destroyed everything of like you know any planes. To, I didn't. I couldn't risk my, my dad finding out. Um, and now I think I'm old enough to where. I think I don't think you know. I, at that point, I didn't want to not be his little girl. You know, I didn't want to lose my dad. Basically, I, I, any, I would never, uh, as far as keeping proof of any of the trips, um, the only person, I never told my parents, you know, I, I, there would be no happy, you know, there would be no good outcome of telling my parents. You know, they would have grounded me. Um, I would have never been allowed out of the house. You know, my, my father would have come unglued. Um, I did tell a friend, my best, she's still my best friend to this day. She knows everything. She knows it all. I'm prepared to do whatever it takes to save <laughs> the country that I believe that we have. I know what he does behind pub like closed doors. Like if it if that's all I'm willing to sacrifice my life to put our country back to in the right like going maybe in some type of positive direction. Not even uh, there's no right or wrong, but a positive direction. This guy's not going to take us anywhere positive. You know, as far as um my life changing by coming out with this information. I've thought long and hard about um, whether or not I should, uh, and I've gone back and forth. Um, but I think that I, I can't, I think that the American people need to know what kind of man this person is. Um, and if my life changes because of that, then so be it. But the American people need to know what they're dealing with. If I had the chance to talk to Donald Trump, I would run the other way. I'm scared of him like I've never been scared of anything else in my entire life. 
I, I, I can't, I can't explain it to you, but I just, the fear of him even being in the, in the next room, make, it, it, I have a panic, I would have, I have a panic attack. Um, the last encounter that I had with Donald Trump, um, Tiffany approached me about um, a rape scene that was supposed to be played out, and I didn't like I didn't like the sound of that at all. But um, Tiffany promised, ensured me that it wasn't going to be if I if it was anything I wasn't comfortable with, we could stop. Um, that she would be right there. And that um, it would it wouldn't get out of, it wouldn't get out of hand, and that um, it was just it was a fantasy, like it wasn't really going to happen. Um, and so she, I told her that I would. Uh, she she basically, I mean, she, Tiffany was always nice to me. She it wasn't that I felt I trusted her, else I you know, and I wouldn't always trusted her or, or done what she asked me to. But um, she was there and. Uh, he came in, and I was basically tied to a bed um, with pantyhose. Uh, and it, he tied him. They were so tight, I could it hurt to even like lay there. And I tried to, you know, try to say something. And it was like, you know, he was just, you know, shut up, you know, shut up, bitch. You know, this is. It was basically like he was. He was being really, really rough. And and I understand. I don't. I mean, it just didn't seem like a fantasy, um, and I started to get scared, and and he was, you know, basically like ripping my clothes off, and and I was actually really, I started, I got freaked out. I, um, I told him that I didn't want to do this. I was, you know, I screamed over for Tiffany, and you know, she was like, Mr. Trump, and she's only, you know, she's not, she's this is scaring her, and he's like, oh, you shut up too. He just turned into this animal. It was like a completely different. Um, completely different person. Um, it was like everyone in the room was scared of him, and uh, I was. Um, it was like I. Uh, I couldn't do anything about it, and. <clears throat> ripped off all my clothes and he started to basically have sex with me and I was screaming because I'd never had sex before it was my first time and Tiffany was yelling at him too she she was saying that I was a virgin and he told us to just shut the fuck up and just basically took my virginity while I was crying and telling him to stop and that's Basically begging for him to just stop, and I don't. I Tiffany was didn't know what else to do either. She no one was there to help us, or me. Um, and so, uh, so after the fact, you know, he 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 basically finishes it. You know, didn't it didn't take that long um, at all. I mean. It, but it was just, it felt like it was like five and a half hours. It felt like it was an eternity. Like, I don't even know how long it was. But um, he was done, and I was crying, and Tiffany was consulting me, and she was, you know, apologizing. She told me that she would never, she didn't, she just never put me in that situation again. But uh, he comes over mad because I was crying, and he said that I should be thankful that someone like Donald Trump took my virginity. He basically didn't say took my virginity. He said, I should be glad that someone like Donald Trump popped my cherry and not some pimply little 14-year-old. And I just was like, what if I, I, you know, I said, what if I get pregnant? I'm not even talking to him. I didn't want to talk to him. I was talking to Tiffany. And he said, well, you'll get an abortion then, bitch, and then just walked away. Um, and I, I, I asked, I, I, I went, I told Tiffany I needed to go home. I never went back again. I guess, um, I guess it's for you to decide, you know? I mean, if, I don't have any kids myself um, because I'm afraid to have kids because 
I mean, who knows what kind of damage they can get into, but if you have a 13-year-old daughter and you're, I mean, would you be okay with the person who's running our con country doing that to your little girl? And I just, I don't know. I just want people to know. I think that I, I, have, a, I, know, I have a faith in our, in our society that we'll make the right choice. He seemed to be taking uh, great pleasure in like dominance and control and, and just the more I screamed, the more I got scared, the more he was enraged and like power, enraged with power and, and it was like he was just charged with it. It was scary. My experience um, with Donald Trump and has made it to where um, I, I can't be in a healthy relationship, much less, I can't be in a relationship without, um, without myself sabotaging it. I don't, um, I don't do well, I, I mean, I, I've, I've been in, I've been in a couple of relationships. I mean, they're never of interest to me normally, but one in particular that was a, a wonderful, he was a wonderful man and I completely, knowing I, I, I had, like subconsciously, it, I couldn't even control myself. It was like I had to get him out of my life because, you know, I don't, I don't know why. It was like anytime anyone loves me, I don't feel worth it or, you know, um, I've, I mean, I've, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. Like I can't, friends, I can have acquaintance that, you know, guys that are acquaintances, but I just, you know, anytime it's, maybe someone expressed anything else besides that, I can't, I take some type of pleasure, not some type of, I don't take pleasure in it, but subconsciously, whether I mean to or not, sometimes I've meant to, it's like I, I, I purposely, hurt their feelings um, just so they'll never talk to me again. Like I make sure that it's not ever a possibility. Uh, Donald, Trump, Donald Trump destroyed my feeling of self-worth and my self-esteem when it was still growing, like when it, was, when it just bloomed. It hadn't even had a chance to experience anything. Um, I have I have only spoken to to one therapist about this just recently. Actually, um, I for a long time I just really just tried to forget about it. Just tried very hard. But um, I've been to counseling for other things, um, and I went to counseling for a previous the previous relationship that I was sabotaging. And my counselor said something has happened to you that, where you were just. You need to deal with that. That's actually what kind of was like, hmm. He knew that there was something that had happened where I was self, self -sab or, you know, sabotaging these relationships, but you know, he said that it was my responsibility to deal with it, of course. Uh, this, this situation with Donald Trump has, has left it, has destroyed my self esteem, and, and it's made it to where I feel like it's destroyed part of my life. Um, I haven't. The only healthy relationship I've completely demolished, um, and I love to choose the dysfunctional ones that I know I can just push away. Uh, he, um, after what happened with him, I can't trust a man ever again. I thinking about it just makes me sick to my stomach. So when, when something so traumatic happens to someone that's so young, you never ever really get over it.